on today's show we have well almost all three of the the group sela um uh, and actually this is our first time that we've had at least two of you guys together and it's three time now i mean todd's been on alan's been on and then now amy's here with us and Woo-hoo. so we're so excited to have you guys thank you we're so happy to be here yeah so uh you know, we, we always go to artist socials and everything just to check up on what's going on in your all's lives. And you guys do a lot of videos of you all singing, singing your new songs or just singing hymns and things like that, which we love. But you guys are missing out on some really um, amazing opportunity to sing about your favorite podcast about Christian music. We still haven't <laughs> seen you guys sing a song about these three dudes that love Jesus and love Christian music. Just saying. The Christian music guys, <laughs> they really are so fine. We love them wow. very much. <laughs> Is that like the Animaniacs tune? That does sound like Animaniacs. <laughs> <laughs> we are the Animaniacs. Little, little deep cut to 90s cartoons. Do you guys have an intro? Music intro? like Like a jingle? No, just a generic thing we yeah. use. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll have to work on something. So <laughs> Well, how 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 are things? How we how how, yeah. how have you guys been? I know you guys were on a big Christmas tour uh, not too long ago, but here we are around Mother's Day. Um what you guys have some shows coming up. Uh tell us what, about what's been going on with y'all. A lot. I mean, there's been a ton of things going on. First of all, I just want to show all my, all your Ohio State fans, my oh, Michigan Todd. National Championship jersey, <laughs> and uh, just wanted them to see that. So, um, I did go to that game, by the way, and the Rose okay. Bowl, the Ohio State game, the Rose Bowl, and then the National Championship. And it, oh, how do I get this so people stop texting me? Um, I think you just put on just silence. So, yeah. Okay. Um. So, my goodness, we. I feel like there's so many, so many different things. The major thing is the project that we're releasing now, which is called Higher Name. And mm-hmm. um, a couple yes. years ago, we did our 25th. Um, it was our 25th anniversary, so we did a Greatest Hymns album that was very similar to the very first album we made. Mm-hmm. And then we did a Christmas album. It was the 20th anniversary since our first Christmas album. We did an album called Rose of Bethlehem, and so then we did At This Table and uh release that and so then we decided alan had this idea of um i wish he was here so he could tell us but he had this idea of what if we all co-wrote everything on the next project which typically one of us you know i'm i usually write the most so i might write three songs you know maybe amy writes Mm -hmm. one alan writes one but never a thing where we do the whole project and so we just really jumped in and came from very different angles as to what we were all dealing with. Um, And so out of that, we wrote, uh, I I co-wrote nine songs. Um, One of us co-wrote at least something, or we spoke into the other two songs. Mm -hmm. And so um, it was just, uh, it's one of my favorite projects we've ever done. Ever done. Yeah. The, the song, he is still, uh, Amy, that seems like a, a pretty personal song. And, uh, that uh, it's such a powerful song. I really, I really like the words when you say, when there are no words and my heart is overcome, I have nothing left to give and I am undone. When I've lost my way, feeling broken and alone. And oh, I will remember where my help comes from. That's so beautiful. Uh, do you mind you guys telling us about that song? Yeah. So um, I haven't written as much as Todd. I just like busy mom, three dogs, you know, a part-time job on the side, lots, lots happening. And so, um, Todd's like, you know, 10 co-writes a week sometimes. And I'm like, I wrote a song 10 months ago. So, um, he's always encouraging me. Like when you go to a co-write, you know, um, have, have an idea, have a thought, have, have a scripture, have something so that as you begin talking, you have like jumping point. And I had these notes in my phone that I had made, um, he is still, you know, this, he's still that, right. He still does miracles. He's still in control. He's still my God. He's still all these things, um, that I had just written down during, 
um, different times of, of prayer. And, um, there's been a lot of tears in our home in the last couple of years, just a lot of, of grief and, um, trauma in our foster journey. And, um, uh, like unexpected, like my parents did foster care for 20 years. So when we started our foster care journey, we just did not expect what happened in our home. So, um, the little guy we got is, is just, he's been through a lot. And so there were times where I literally was like, I can't, I can't function today. I get took to the bed or, you know, sat in my closet in my little prayer chair, just crying and listening to worship music. Um, but in those moments when there are literally no words, and I'm just completely undone and broken. He is still my comforter and he still hears my cry and he still shows up. And, um, it's just been a journey and it's, it's coming to an end and he is still showing up, showing up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, it's a it's a beautiful reminder, you know. And I think about well, I think about music a lot about situ- when we go through different situations, but I also think about this movie called uh, Facing the Giants. And mm-hmm. there's a scene in the movie where they're trying to get pregnant, and she goes into the doctor's office, and there's music playing in the background, and you t- see the doctor without saying it, but you're not pregnant. She goes outside and just starts weeping, and she says, "God, I'm going to praise you." in the good times and I'm going to praise you in the bad times and you're still, you're still faithful. And then at that point, the doctor realizes, Oh my gosh, I gave her the wrong report, the wrong test. And she runs outside and says, you're pregnant, you know? Wow. And so mm-hmm. it's just, you know, it's, it's a powerful. And then reminder. the backing track of that um, song is uh, he is still. Yeah. <laughs> <by Stella. laughs> no, Don't I wish. That'd be great. <laughs> Let's write that movie. Wait, with a different idea. Natalie Lane. (laughs) The podcast. So your all's um, the album higher name with the I love this the what do they call it the title track Mm -hmm. of higher name. Um, I love the the sound of the intro. It's just like a cool like the vocals with the effect on the vocals. Like it's a it's a really cool um, rendition remix of that song. Tell us a little bit about that one. Yeah, so as far as that goes, that was our producer Chris Bevins. He has he's a, a plays B three and keyboard and organ and just brilliant. He did some kind of effect with a uh, where he took my vocal, I think, and then he did some effect on it through the keyboard, and then yeah, put it sounded like in. a vocoder type, almost yeah. like a Phil Collins sound. <laughs> yeah, it does, which I love Phil Collins. Yeah. So that was yeah. that would work. For, yeah. We definitely has kind of the eighties feel to it. Um, but yeah, we, uh, you know, over the past couple of years, I've just, as far as the theme goes, I've just, I feel like we're just under attack, you know, like I feel like the enemy is so brazen and out there and he's not hiding anymore. And when you study scripture, I I think sometimes in America, we lose sight of the spiritual realm. We, We lose sight of how active it actually is. And when Paul says we wrestle not, with flesh and blood, but against principalities and dominions and powers, what he's saying is, as real as the conversation is that we're all having, the spiritual realm is far more real. And I don't think we, I don't think we really believe that, you know, but you see the evidence of that. You see in, um, oh, uh, I think it's second Kings chapter six. I might be, I might be off on that, but Elisha is, um, telling all the secrets of the king of Syria to the king of Israel. And the king of Syria thinks that his men are um, betraying him. And so he says, why are you betraying me? And they're like, oh, king, we're not doing anything. It's Elisha, the prophet of Israel. He knows the very secrets you whisper in your bedchamber. And so the king sends his soldiers, thousands of them, to take Elisha captive. And when he surrounds the house, Elisha's servant sees all these soldiers and he says my lord what are we going to do and elisha says oh don't worry our numbers are far greater than theirs and he goes what are you talking about you know and he didn't really say what are you talking about he's you know he said a little more sophisticated (laughs) there than me but but elisha gen z version god yes gen z version (laughs) no cat elisha (laughs) elisha prays for his eyes to be open and when he looks out he sees thousands upon thousands of god's angel armies surrounding them 
and they blind them and they take them captive and they end up sending them back to Syria and there's peace for a while. And you see these kind of things over and over again. Another thing that's incredible is, um, and I know some people have a different, they think it's a real king. To me, it's a fallen angel. It's in Daniel chapter nine, Gabriel, I believe, is trying to get Daniel a message uh, because Daniel's seen this horrific vision and he doesn't know what to do with it. So he pleads for an interpretation and God sends an angel. Uh, the chapter before it's Gabriel. So I think it's Gabriel. He sends him and he says to Daniel, oh, you who are highly favored and beloved and known in heaven, the minute you requested a petition, interpretation, I was sent, but I've been That's held up by the prince of Persia for 21 days. This isn't a human king. There's no human king that could hold up an angel. This is a demonic power that had control over the kingdom of Persia. And he had to call Michael the archangel to help him to get through to give the message. And then he tells him, I'm going to have to go back with Michael and fight this king. And then I'll have to deal with, with the prince of Greece when he rises up. Not talking about Alexander the Great, but talking about the prince who rules over the kingdom of Greece. So all that to say, man, you go back to that verse with Paul, and it's like we are dealing with spiritual forces. And so we need to be in prayer. We need to be fasting. We need to be aware and not just going about our day thinking that this stuff only happens in Haiti or it only happens in Africa where I grew up. I was a missionary kid and grew up in Congo. And we had witch doctors in every village. This is yeah. happening here. And we're seeing it. We're seeing the confusion. You know, where mm. are, are you a man? Or are you a woman? Are you this? Or are you that? Like, mm -hmm. this is like, there's so much confusion. So with this song, the idea behind it is let's walk in the power of God. Let's walk in the authority of who Jesus is. Don't walk in fear. Don't walk, you know, with your tail between your legs. You walk in the authority of the Lord, but let's walk with purpose. And let's not, let's not allow fear to control us. Mm -hmm. And let's call on the name that is above all names. Because in Philippians 2, it says that God, because of Jesus' humility, I love that, that because of his humility, humility to the point of death, even death on the cross, God has raised him up and given him the name that is above every name so that at the name of mm -hmm. Jesus, every knee will bow that is in heaven, that is in earth, and that is under the earth. And the under the earth, that is the spiritual realm. Those are demonic forces that we have to deal with. And so it's this thing of let's walk in this power. So that's where higher name came from. It's Jesus being the higher name. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor uh, Todd. <laughs> yeah. Take it. up an offering. Yeah. <laughs> right. I, I mean. I was just telling you can send your church, checks to uh... <laughs> telling our church Sunday. I'm like, guys, I mean, what's going on in these universities around the United States? I mean, this is happening in America. You know, we're we're no longer looking on the news at things happening overseas, which they're happening. But I mean, this stuff, this craziness is happening, happening here um, in America. And people need to wake up and they need to pray like never before. And they need to, like you said, look to God because he is the author and the finisher. And I, and I said too, I said, everything that's going on has not caught him off guard. It didn't, mm -hmm. you know, he didn't like, Oh my gosh, what what's going on? And he's not surprised. He knew it was going to happen, but we just need to remember who we are fixing our mm -hmm. eyes upon. And so, mm -hmm. It's good. Yeah. So we have a, um, a, we're a podcast for fans by fans and we have a fan question for you all. Um, Lacey from Salt Lake city. And this is taking it back a few years. Wants to know the story behind the song S step into my story. Mm. Yeah, that is a song uh, that Amy sang the lead on and uh, was amazing on that. That was a song inspired by our manager. Uh, Marcus Rickson. And so um, I wrote that with Travis Ryan and, um, oh, why am I going blank on her name? She's a phenomenal writer. Um, anyways, I'll, I'll figure that out in just a second. But the story behind it is um, he grew up in India uh, in a 12 by six foot, one bedroom, like one room house. Mm -hmm. His parents were ministers, but they were so poor, they slept on the floor and he slept and he and his sister slept on the bed. They were um, sponsored kids through One Child, which is an organization that we now work with that is a child sponsorship mm -hmm. program. And it means so much more 
because of Marcus, but basically that allowed him to go to school, Mm -hmm. allowed him to eat um, medicine, shoes, all of that, graduates high school, and and in high school had this passion for music, like knew that God, he's like, I felt like God gave me this gift to be involved in music. So he has 50 bucks in his pocket and a ticket to Kentucky to go to Asbury University. Works his way through doing construction, carpentry, would um, uh, drive his motorcycle down in the rain and hitchhike to come down to Nashville and work at studios. Eventually gets a job with Unspoken as a, not a road manager, I think as a roadie and then a road manager, and then started yeah. managing um, people. Yeah. What, what's the rest of the story there, Amy? He, he yeah, manages I mean, he with just... them. He would he would intern and jump on a bus with anyone <clears throat> who would have him and and that's how he learned but he was such a hard worker and he was so good with people um yeah. so yeah he he was working with unspoken and then our management at the time hired him to road manage for us and then um when we were ready to leave our management um it was at the exact time that he told us he was leaving his management company to pursue what he, he just knew God was calling him to something different. And he was kind of like, I'm not really sure what the next step is. And I was like, I know what the next step is. <laughs> um, and I told the boys, I was like, yeah. guys, I think he's supposed to manage us. And they were like, wait, you think? Um, but you know, as the wife, what is it? I'm the neck of the, so I'm like the work wife, you know? Um, yeah. so I just kind of go, okay, guys, I have this and I do Todd's very, um, what is it? Respectful of my like women's intuition. And I was like, man, I really feel like just great intuition. we're supposed to have this conversation. And, um, and then they did. And then he started managing us, but yeah, they wrote that story, that song based on just watching God move in Marcus's life over the course of, of, of his life as a sponsored child in Calcutta to now, you know, managing artists and it's just awesome. Yeah. And it was his idea too, for us to work with one child, because originally I was a little uh, child sponsored out and we'd worked with a couple other organizations and they're great, but it just, I wanted to do something different. So we were doing something with radios because my parents have a radio station in Africa. He comes to us with one child and he said, Hey, would you think about doing this? And I was like, it's a child sponsorship thing, right? And I was like, he said, yeah. I was like, yeah, man, I love what they do. I believe in what they do. I'm just a little burnt out by it. And I can't figure out a way to not be a car salesman. Excuse me. I wasn't crying there. <laughs> I just got something in my throat. But I, I, felt like, I felt like I was suddenly selling something rather than it being a natural part of our concert. And he just looked at me and he said, hey, right. I, yeah. was, I was a sponsor kid for 14 years. And that was it. Yeah. That was it. I, I didn't have to be a car oh, yeah. salesman. Now when we're out on the road, it's like, hey, you get the honor of coming alongside yeah. a kid like Marcus and raising them yeah. and seeing how they can impact their country. His 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 sister has uh, she was sponsored for thirteen years. Nikita, she has thir- uh, uh, thirteen. She has two master's degrees. Two masters. And she pours into kids in Calcutta. So yeah. we get to come alongside, and so that's his story. The way that God stepped in was just unbelievable. Now he's been a part of seeing over uh, 1,200 kids sponsored in the Dominican Republic because of his That's life. Awesome. So it's just really full yeah. circle. I will say you all have collabed with a few people, and I said this to Alan before, but you guys need uh, to collab with Dennis Quaid, and you needed to collab with Josh Groban and do um, the song, You Raise Me, you up. Raise me up. Yeah. <laughs> Totally. Let's do it. Let's do it. Come well, on, Dennis. I will. Yeah, I will say you all passed. I, I, I would. I don't think there was there was not one that you missed. Not even the album. No. The only one do that was a. Uh, the only people one mess up. They don't. For, they don't remember. Sometimes, yeah. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. We had. Uh, just... We talked with Shonda Pierce the other day, and we did a game with her Bible verse or movie quote. And oh, jeez, I would fail that for sure. <laughs> There's a lot of Bible would quotes. It's not, not like a movie quote, and vice versa. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just give us a couple. Give us oh, a couple. I, I am curious. Uh, let me hit the one point twenty one gigawatts. <laughs> Definitely not a Bible verse. Hang on, I have to go back here on our. I got it. I got it. Person, these here. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Chris. 
Um, okay, so Bible verse or so, movie quote. There is nothing free except the grace of God. Mm. That's got to be a movie. That is a movie. And is it is true movie? grit. Okay. Oh, interesting. Let's see. I've What's never his... seen it. As God is my witness, I'll never be hungry again. <laughs> That's a movie. That's a movie. That's Gone with the Wind. As God is my witness. <laughs> it's my mom's favorite movie. Nice job. Uh, let's see. You find one, Chris, or? Uh, let's see. Jesus wept. <laughs> Jesus wept. I got one. If you don't. Yeah, go ahead. A king's fury is a messenger of death, but a wise person appeases it. Bible verse? That sounds like Proverbs. Yes, Proverbs. Proverbs. But it could be a movie. I mean, it could sound, sounds like it goes yeah. in like Gladiator or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that, is that you can Proverbs? You write that movie that and like put Bible sailor verse. songs in it. It was, yeah. It is Proverbs, yeah. Okay. You got one, Chris, or? No. All right. So you're saying we did way better right. than Shonda? Is that what you're saying? Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> love you, Shonda. Yeah, love you. Love her. <laughs> well, guys, what is next for you all, and how can our listeners keep up with you? Yeah, man. Um, well, Amy, why don't you talk first, because you've got a pretty big thing that just came out. and talk about that, and then I'll talk about what we're doing with uh, the album and the Christmas yeah. musical and stuff like that. Yeah, I just started releasing singles off a solo worship album that I did. I did a live worship album at my church in Texas uh, back in January, a live worship night. Um, Todd came and sang on one of the songs. Um, and so, yeah, I just started releasing singles. My first single is out. It's called Sing a New Song. And then I'll be releasing probably one single a month until the album comes out in August. But I'm, I'm really excited about it. Um, I'll, I'll name drop a little. Charity Gale wrote a little bit on it, um, which I just adore her and her writing and her just her heart. She's amazing. And um, Crystal Yates. So Crystal Yates wrote on it. Um, and actually, a lot of those people and songs writers that, that came out of the Jenny Lee Riddle camp. So um, Todd Smith wrote a song on it. And, uh, He's pretty actually good. I love, I stole it. It was a sailor pitch and I was like, mm, dibs. And so, <laughs> um, and it, yeah, so I'm just really excited about it. It's the whole, the album's called for your glory. Uh, but the first single out is sing a new song. Where can people yeah. find you on your socials, Amy? Um, I have a music, I have a music page now and I, I think it's Amy Perry music <laughs> learning as I go. <laughs> I don't know anything, um, but What's this I have real been sharing, thing? I've been sharing stuff from Sayla's Facebook page. So if you're already a Sayla fan on Sayla's Facebook and Instagram, then you can pretty much find me pretty easily. And then you can stream my song and you will be able to stream my album on all streaming platforms. So, When's your next single come out? Should be June 7th. And when does the album release? I think August 9th. My birthday is August 10th, so I'm trying to trying to coincide it for like a happy birthday release, but uh, we'll see. And it's, it's a great album. It's, it's so good. And she, uh, she redid, she did a new version of I got saved with yeah. me and with Crystal oh, nice. Yates who wrote the song. Yeah. And mm. um, she's got this kid from Nashville um, who's just ridiculously uh, talented, like unbelievable voice. What, what's his name again? Jordan McCullough. Jordan. Yes. How'd you find him? I was, whenever I'm in town in Nashville visiting, if I'm there on a Sunday, I try to go to church with my friends. And, um, I went to church with my friend, Jill. She goes to Zeal church in Nashville. And like, I mean, like probably 18 months ago, two years ago, I went with her on a Sunday morning and he was leading worship. And I was like, who is that kid? And I remember making a note. I have like thousands of notes in my phone. Like, if I do a worship album, I want this guy to sing on it. And then like a year later when I started planning it, um, I asked like, will you ask him if he'll sing on my <laughs> album? Like I hadn't even met him yet. And then we, when I came to town, we had dinner with some friends so that I could get to know him a little and um, just anointed and incredibly humble and talented. And then there was this, uh, a writing event for Sayla for this album that for Higher Name, where we just kind of talked about our hearts and, and what kind of songs we wanted written. And then the, the teams dispersed and they all wrote songs based on what we had shared. And this 
small group of writers wrote this song and I went up, we, you go upstairs halfway through the night to kind of listen to how, what they're working on. And they started playing it. And I was like, dibs, I'm feeling <laughs> it. And so, um, but it is really just my heart song. It's called This Far. And it was just birthed out of that, an old, um, was it James Cleveland song? No, I don't feel no ways tired. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me the road would be easy. And the tagline is, I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. And I sang that to the songwriters that night. And I was like, I've literally just been weeping that song. Like I, we were just, just going through so much. And I just had to cling to the truth, knowing that like, I know he didn't bring me through what I've been through to just leave me in this painful place. And they wrote this song this far. And so it wasn't supposed to be a duet. But um, when we were writing the second verse over Zoom, because we were finishing the song together a few months later, um, one of the songwriters, Jesse Grisham, he had to um, sing it for the demo. And our demo was literally like a Frankenstein of me singing into my phone, their demo from the studio, and then him adding this verse. And he did this really fantastic little vocal thing that I was like, well, now I got to have a dude sing on the album because <laughs> that it was so good what he did in the verse. And so that's when I was like, man, I'm, I'm just going to ask Jordan. Like, I, I, again, I didn't know him very well, but his heart of worship is just so beautiful. And, um, it just, it's probably for me, it's like my, one of my favorite moments on the whole album. So I'm really excited for everybody to hear it. That was a really long so way. Good. Sorry, Todd. Long, long no, story. It's, it's so good. It's, it's such a great project. So mm, we're excited. Yeah. So we've got that going and then, uh, we've got this project higher name. And so we've got singles coming out pretty much every month. We've got, um, I don't know when this is going to air, but a song called Rise Up is going to come out May 31st, and it's a perfect summer song, uh, just fun. Like, you know, you're going to the beach, you got the, um, you know, you know, convertible, you know, just yeah. driving through. It's it's great. And then we've got a song called uh, Christ the Perfect Sacrifice, which is an old like oh, hymn that Alan and I co-wrote. So pretty. So and, pretty. Um, thank you. Uh, with Mike Harlan and Jonathan Smith. I actually wrote with them today. Um, mm. But uh, just we wanted it to be like a classic Sela, almost like a, mm. a, a hymn from the 1800s or the 1900s. And so I think we really did that just talking about him being the sacri perfect sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And it's um, beautiful. Just, uh, you know, Amy obviously went through has gone through so much with foster care. And so there's another song she wrote um, or sorry that she spoke into called uh, You Don't Leave Me. And um, the, I remember the thing you said was you said you didn't lead me here to leave me here. Mm -hmm. And that was just a very profound statement. And so Natalie Lane, who co-wrote He Is Still, um, and several other writers co-wrote on that. Um, and we've got a song. Alan has an old friend um, named Travis Wyrick, who is a producer for P.O.D. and all mm. these heavy metal hard rock bands. They graduated from high school together. And we um, spoke into this song about spiritual warfare. And so three of our friends, I think it was Cole Tag and Amanda Jansen, and um, Amy, who's, who's your friend? Um, Sydney. Who, Sydney. Chambers. The three of them. Sydney wrote uh, wrote it. And it's just this hard rock, you know. And I grew up listening to rock, classic rock, all that stuff. So Alan was like, what if we get him to produce that song? And so we went to Knoxville and, you know, Alan reunited with him. And he just did an incredible job producing that. So there's a huge variety of, like, piano, vocal, uh, Alan, um a song like like that one or higher name and then these gospel worship songs like what amy's doing with he is still and then alan has always been more the gentle east tennessee piano vocal kind of guy uh and for our vocals and he's just experienced a ton of loss over the past four years probably like 10 uh close friends and family members and lost his mm -hmm. mom last october and so, um, you know, just seeing unanswered prayers, you know, just seeing heartache and grief. And um, so he uh, there's a song called The Rock is My Salvation. And oh, it's just we, re we recorded so the strings for it today, actually. And it, just, it almost made me cry just listening to the string mm -hmm. players. Um, it's just beautiful. But so there's a wide variety of, of things that we're bringing um, uh, yeah. to the table on this album. And then we're also working on a, we just finished up a Christmas musical that's going to release in June. 
Uh, it's called it's called Light of the Stable. Uh, they took six of our songs from our to a Rose of Bethlehem and at this table album. And then I went on a trip with my daughter in March to Singapore, a school trip, come back, 14 hour flight, wake up the next day to a text from the guy who's in charge of the musical. And he says, Hey Todd, it's a Tuesday. It's Tuesday. He goes, I need four songs by next Monday. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> uh. Oh my word. But ended up writing. You with, guys um, did it. W. Yeah. We did it. I wrote with Michael W. Smith and Tony Wood, um, wrote with several other writers, and Al and I did a uh, really fun version of um, uh, Gloria. Gloria, could have just said that. In Excelsis Deo, <laughs> but we did an African African version of it, that kind yeah. of feel. Uh, okay. And so that's been so exciting because it's just completely different. Like, I don't mm-hmm. know the print world, and so to be really involved in that has been really fun. And then... Sorry, I, 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 Amy said Rights and Bites. I want to acknowledge Rights and Bites because six of the songs that we tracked, that we recorded on this project, came mm-hmm. out of Rights and Bites. And it is this amazing community of writers, a lot of young writers who've just come to Nashville. They're looking for, you know, to get community. They're looking for a way to get their foot in the door. And so um, uh, Tammy and Lance... Um, have just done an incredible job at We Rock Studios, and they created this group called Rights and Bites with our manager Marcus and uh, producers produced our produced two songs on this project, uh, Jay Spate, and so they have probably 150 writers that they choose from. But like Amy said, what you do is um, they you gather at this studio. There's six writing rooms there, and you come in for dinner and you share your stories, four or five stories that you want to write about. At, during dinner and then they break off into groups of three and four and start writing on whatever thing connects with them the most and so a lot yeah. of people connected with amy's idea of you don't leave me you didn't leave leave me here to leave me here mm-hmm. or the spiritual warfare stuff and so after about 45 minutes of them writing they're just trying to get a hook like a verse and a chorus but after 45 minutes we all go into the rooms and listen to the songs and then critique and go oh you know what maybe change the course up Maybe change those lyrics. Oh, I love where that is. And then they have about another hour to finish and record a demo. And then they play all the demos. And then if we like them, we come back and write with those writers. And so and finish the songs. And finish mm-hmm. the songs. And so it's yeah. it's a beautiful way to build new relationships and connections, give new songwriters a chance, but also get fresh ideas from new songwriters. And so it's I I, I believe in it. I support it so much by I'll bring in other artists to come and and take part in it. Um, but rights and bites, a big shout out to them. They, uh, they had a lot to do with this, this project. Yeah. Mm, wow. Now you said, when was the release of higher name? So higher name, the single came out March 22nd. The, mm-hmm. album, the album will come out. The album will come out November 1st. Um, okay. we're, we're going to release probably seven or eight singles, um, starting with higher name. And then we just, uh, released he is still um rise up will be at the end of the month and then we'll just keep releasing until november 1st well to wrap up we'd like to see if you guys be willing to share something that god's been doing in your life recently that would help build our viewers and listeners faith go ahead amy he's still working on me um you know this foster journey that we've been on has been two years plus And, um, we known for a while that God said he's not ours, um, due to just some of the things he's experienced. And we have a biological son that we have to kind of consider. And so, um, I have been like pleading with the Lord for months, just like, this isn't working out and that isn't working out. And like, how much longer are we going to have him? And just feeling so, um, just frustrated with the system, you know, the foster care system, and just not always the easiest thing to deal with. And recently, um, there was a, a couple interested and it was like almost 90 days of waiting for paperwork and they hadn't even met him yet. And the social worker, you know, said this happened or that happened. And I was just, gosh, I was just so mad that we were literally turning people away who were interested in adopting this beautiful kid because we're in process with this couple. And, um, I don't want to go too long about about it, but last maybe like a week and a half ago, 
I got an email that they changed their mind. And I was like, I can't even process that after 90 days. Like what happened? Well, it turns out they were interested in possibly having multiple children. And I have said many times that this kiddo needs to be an only child for a while, for a very long time. Um, his neglect is deep and he needs to be someone's onlyest, like just all the attention and focus and energy on this kid. And he deserves that. He deserves to have, you know, to feel safe and loved. And I mean, to say that I had a breakdown would be like an understatement. Mm -hmm. I ceased functioning. Um, I curled in bed. I mean, I was just so broken and grief stricken, um, for him. Because the social worker comes and we talk about adoption. We talk about he's looking for his forever family. And so he gets excited, um, even though he doesn't fully understand what that means. Like, it's exciting for him to think that someone's going to choose him. And so um, I just, gosh, I mean, I just was like, how much longer is this going to take for this poor kiddo to finally feel chosen? And I was just angry and I wasn't even nice to my husband about it. You know, like I just was just falling apart. And I almost texted my friend, my past, one of my pastors. And I was like, you know what? I don't even need to just dump this on her. I'm just going to like crawl into bed and be sad. And I did. I just kind of gave up for the day. And then the next day I had a migraine because of it. And so by the middle of the week, I just was completely just emotionally wrung out. You know, like, what are you going to do? You've been crying for two days. And I'm like, Lord, I trust you. And I, I, I mean that, but also like, what are you doing? Why are you, what is happening? And, um, on that Friday I had to take my husband over to the church to do something. And I was like, I'm going to drive you over there. And I, I was like, I have groceries to pick up, but I drove him over there and, um, pastor's wife was there. And I said a comment to her about something my sister had said to me about this foster situation. And, um, she got this look on her face and she said, she breathed a sigh of relief. And she said, now I can tell you what the Lord has told me for you. Um, she said, I ha asked the Lord, why was he still in your home? You know, when, when we're praying for this family and we're waiting for this family and it's taking so long and, and he said, she won't release him. And she's not wrong. Even though I have prayed for a home for him. Giving him up is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. And it's killing me. And so I think there was a part of me that wanted like the most perfect scenario I could think of for him to come along before I would let him go. And nothing was coming along. So then it was okay for me to keep him, even though it's just upheaval in our home. It's so stressful. And uh, my biological son's going through a lot. And, and she was like, Amy, you have to release him. God's not going to pry him from your fingers. He's waiting for you to trust him and release. And um, I took to the bed again, but for different reasons, you know, like I just needed to hear it. I think from someone yeah. that wasn't like my family members going, you know what you need to do. And I did. And so I, I, I messaged the people that I needed to and said, I think we need to set a date for this is the end of us fostering him. And I need to trust that God's going to bring a family along and the, the, the God's version of what God wants for him and not what Amy wants for him. Um, and so we have to do this meeting. It's, it's called a rock meeting and it's when you give your notice. And, um, and I'm just was grief stricken over having to even give that because part of me feels like I failed him. Um, and I know I haven't, you know, we've given him yeah. two plus years of, um, and if you knew where he came from to where he is now, he's a walking miracle. Yeah. yeah. And, um, we did the meeting and over zoom and an hour, um, an hour later, the caseworker called and said, would you do a zoom with a potential parent? Mm. I was like, okay, God, I get mm. that you were just waiting for me to release him. Mm. Um, and so we are in process now with a potential Amazing. adoptive situation for him. Mm -hmm. They will be meeting him next week. And um, to just like literally hour, not even hours, like God already had her ready to go. His new mom. I just had to be willing to release him. And, you know, there's just, 
such a huge lesson in that, right? Sometimes we yeah. ask for God to take things, but until we're ready to actually lay them down, he's not mm. going to pry them from our, our hands, you know? Yeah. And so, um, I don't, I don't know how long it will take, but, um, there's grief and, and that's okay. It's okay to feel sad and, and I'm going to miss him. And, um, but God has so many great things for him. And I'm just so grateful to have been a part of his life for as long as I have. It's beautiful. That's beautiful. That yeah. is beautiful. And, uh, I mean, Amy, you, you, <clears throat> wow. You, um, uh, you just sang about it. We talked about the song earlier. He, he is still, you know, and, uh, I believe that, you know, we, a lot of times we just, we go through things and we go through, uh, mountains and, um, trials, tribulations and, and, uh, but the beauty, the beauty of it is we're not, we're not staying there. You know, we're just, we're going through it and we go through seasons and we go through uh, situations. And that's when I go through things. And when my family goes through these things, that's, I got to be reminded of that. I was like, Jacob, I'm not, I'm not staying here. We're not staying in this situation. Uh, it's just a season. And so, uh, that's powerful. Thank you for sharing and being so vulnerable. Uh, well, you guys, um, thank you all so much for joining us and, uh, higher name. The album is coming out, uh, November 1st around that time. And yeah. check out Amy's music. Um, you you said your your album is coming out August 9th, correct? Around that time, yes. around your birthday. Yes. yes. Okay. And then uh, is is Alan doing anything solo, or is he just working doing the sailor stuff? Just doing the sailor stuff for right now. Okay. And yeah. Todd, you got a you got a new song out as well too. Yes, it's called yes. Keep On Fighting. That just <laughs> yep. came out. And then I also have a song, How Good It Gets, and that is coming out, I think, July 12th. Oh, yeah. So, I think I just I saw that banner. That. Yeah. I just so, saw that. Um, so, yeah, that's, busy. that's coming up, too. But, um, yeah. yeah, it's been fun. All right.